Hey class, it's Mr. Jones. Sorry I couldn't be at school today, um, but wanted to kind of go over the um, assignment for today so it'll make a little more sense because I know there's a lot to it. So it says first, view Google Slides presentation that helps introduce the cask of Amontillado, paying particular attention to slides 6, 9, and 11. You do not have to make the predictions or anything that's on the Google Slides, I've created a Google form for y'all to complete once you have reviewed the presentation. So here's the presentation. You all just go through. You need to know what these definitions are of cask and of Amontillado and of Sherry. Um, you need to know what the definition or what the catacombs are because that's where um, the majority of the cask of Amontillado is set. And then you need to know kind of what a carnival is. Um, that's where that's another setting for the cask of Amontillado, and those are the, those are the questions that will be on the Google form. Um, all of them will just be kind of going back, and um, you all are just answering them. Uh, whoops, clicked the wrong thing. Uh, complete Google form entitled "The Cask of Amontillado Introduction," which this is this right here, and. Like I said, I think there's only five questions. It's just about definitions. So should be pretty straightforward. All that is just so you have an understanding of what those words are before you start reading. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this. Um, number two, where I did that. Three, submit Google form and click on the link. Above to log in to Commonlet. Remember, make sure you click log in with Google. We're reading the Cask of Amontillado, and you all have to complete the guided reading questions and get them correct when they show up to advance. I see how many attempts it takes you all to get these questions correct. So please try. So please try. This is a great way to make sure that you are actually comprehending the text. So all that is is like you come here to question one. You come and ask you a question, you have to answer it. But you all with common lit, um, there are numbers here. Take advantage of those because especially Cask of Montiato is at a pretty advanced lexile level, means it's kind of got some bigger words in it. And if you see a word and a number right beside it, it's just going to give you the definition of those words. So make sure you... That's a really good re good um, resource that Common Lit offers. So make sure you make the most of it. And so you're just going to go through and read it. And all you're doing is answering the guided reading questions for the first time. There's a read aloud option available on Common Lit if you would choose to, if you, if you choose, I shouldn't say if you would choose. Um, to go that route. The only thing is that I ask if you are an in-person student, be sure to have earphones before you start playing the read aloud option in class, please. Um, and that's just so you're, sorry. That way you're just, it's so you're not just disturbing all the, you know, other classmates. And the last thing it says, Last thing, and you might not even get to it today, and that is completely fine. Once you have read through the Cask of Amontillado once and completed all of the guided reading questions, reread the text looking for at least three examples of irony. Remember, irony is something that happens that you don't expect to happen. There are different ironic events throughout the story. All you need to do to mark these, exam mark these three examples is to insert a box beside the different examples of, of irony that you found. And in the text box, you label it as irony and give me a sentence explaining how it is ironic. So I'll show you all kind of what I mean here. So let's say you want to label this as ironic. Insert a text box. Irony. This is ironic because yada, 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 yada. And once you're finished, you're done.
And if you ever need to delete one, you just hit the three dots and delete annotation. Remember, I only need three of these, you all. I only need three once you're finished. Remember, I need an explanation for each of them. Um, no, really no more than a sentence or two at the absolute most. And make sure you do all your guided reading questions. Remember, um, I do see how ma however many attempts it takes you to um, answer these. And I don't, do, I don't say that to scare you because a lot of times you can tell if someone's actually reading it and maybe they're just stuck on one because they get stuck on one. You know, they don't get stuck on like five or six of them. That's how I can tell the difference. So just make sure you're trying on this because, y'all, like I said, this is a, probably the last of the three short stories I would want to try to teach you all over a computer, which is what I'm having to do now. And I do apologize for it. But I think using the guided reading questions and kind of annotating for irony, I think it'd be, it'll be a good way to make sure that you're comprehending things. Um, but as always, you all shoot me an email. I, I, I can't know telepathically if you're confused or you're stuck on something. Shoot me an email if you're confused. That way I can help you with any way I can. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it for today. I hope all that makes sense. Like I said, if it doesn't, please, please, please shoot me an email. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you all for listening.